Well, hello, everybody. It's Michael Oskam from ProWestRecording.com. Um, I'd like to encourage you just right off the bat, if you haven't already, please subscribe. That way you can stay up to date. There's a lot of really exciting things happening in the coming weeks, including my album release, um, or at least a single off of that album. And then, of course, always new lessons. So most of what I'm talking about today is just a matter of opinion. I'm going to throw some things your guys' way. You're going to take it for what it's worth and go about your day. But I always feel weird when I'm like preaching, so to speak, in a lesson and I don't give you anything to listen to. So this is just a little ditty that I created in the past 10 minutes. Let's take a listen. Cool sounds that you can create in Studio One, all right? So kind of cool, literally stock sounds, a little 25 key mini, uh, uh, MIDI keyboard that I, I like to use. Uh, I could create this at Starbucks. That's what's so cool about uh, the, the music world that we live in today. Anyway, on with the lesson. It's not much of a lesson, it's more of just a statement of opinion. You are looking at Studio One 3, and... Um, I just wanted to kind of weigh in, check in with you guys on how I feel about um, Studio One. Uh, as, as most of us know by now, uh, us Pro Tools users, let me explain it to you this way. My main DAW is Pro Tools. I use that the most. I get most of my sessions from, uh, from my clients in Pro Tools uh, format. Uh, I would say about 70% in Pro Tools, 60% in Pro Tools, um, a good 30% in Logic, and then maybe 10% in Studio One. And then, of course, there's always some Cubase and, and other things, too. But um, Pro Tools is what I, what I am best at. Now, I can operate all DAWs uh, equally. Now, if you are familiar with how a digital audio workstation works, and I'm talking about signal flow, um, in particular, signal flow, gain staging, all of these kinds of things. You can operate any digital audio workstation. If you have a rudimentary understanding of the software or of the process, because essentially what a DAW is, is a digital representation of uh, a mixing console. Now, as the technology is, is straying further and further from the analog realm, um, Digital audio workstations are becoming a little bit more advanced and, advanced and they have all sorts of features that don't necessarily mimic what you would be doing on an analog console, but that's, that's beyond the scope of this. My point is, is that if you can wrap your head around Pro Tools, for example, then you can wrap your head around Studio One. You can, you can operate Logic. You can operate any DOS someone puts in front of you. You may not know the shortcut uh, keys, you know, all the hot keys. Uh, you may not know where everything is. It may be laid out differently. In fact, they all are. They're all laid out differently. They have different, um, like, abilities and options. For example, Studio One 3 allows you to drag and drop, whereas Pro Tools doesn't really have that. Now, it used to be that Pro Tools was the industry standard, and arguably it still is especially in post-production, I'm talking film, television, uh, all of that, it works so closely hand-in-hand -hand with Media Composer, obviously because Avid is the manufacturer, that um, it's still dominant in that field. However, in the last five, six, seven, eight years, there's been an increase in home studios. And the reason is, is the equipment has become more and more and more affordable. So as things become more affordable and as people are acquiring new sorts of gear, uh, they're opening up their, uh, their minds to certain alternatives. And one of them is this, the one you're looking at. It's Studio One. Now, I got interested in Studio One uh, about three years ago. Um, and it was, you know, a, a client had sent me something in Studio One and I hadn't really used it yet. And um, so he wanted me to mix the song in Studio One and, and give him a lesson in, in, in mixing. And um, 
so I, I've got it, and I've sim since upgraded to the version 3. And I was a big fan of it back then, so I'm very, very pleased to see that it's gaining, you know, some rep uh, a better reputation amongst people out there. It's being used more and more. And I think the reason is, one I already mentioned, it's affordable. We all know that Pro Tools has gone to a subscription model. And if you're not in the business and you're not making money from your mixes, it's hard to justify spending uh, that much money on your digital audio workstation, considering that all of them nowadays can do essentially the same things. They may go about doing it differently, but they can accomplish the same things. This is a program that'll turn your analog signal into ones and zeros, binary code. That's what a DAW does. And as long as you're ensuring that your sam uh, sample rate and bit depth are, you know, of the correct setting. For example, I always run at 48 kilohertz, and I've been running at 32 bit float. And we can argue about that to a blue in the face. I'm not going to talk about it now. So you're certainly not picking one DAW over the other because Pro Tools can do this and Logic can't. No, no, no. Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, for the most part, they can do everything. Okay? So price plays a big factor in your decision. Um, Logic X, for example, is an outstanding DAW. It's not my favorite. Uh, it doesn't really match my workflow, but um, it has amazing synthetic drums, uh, keys, basses, all of this stuff uh, for $200, you guys. That's absurd. Uh, for those of us who've been in this, been doing this for a long time, that is absurd <laughs> in the best way possible. Um, and a great, ar you know, uh, an argument that people like to bring up is like, well, with making these softwares more affordable, we're just seeing an influx of, of crappy music, and, and you know, I hate that it is this way. And now that's kind of an old school way of thinking. But I, one of the best arguments against that that I ever heard was, just because you give someone Microsoft Word, that doesn't mean they can write like Ernest Hemingway. So there's still a whole lot of talent that goes into this, but there are a few decisions, a few a few factors that will help make your decision. Price I mentioned. The other most important, in my opinion, is workflow. Now I mentioned that I started on Pro Tools years and years and years and years and years ago. So to me, I know it like the back of my hand. I could literally mix an album in my sleep. Um, I could literally walk somebody through mixing an album on the phone and I would know where every button is and I would know every hotkey and that's called being a Pro Tools ninja. And for those of you out there who know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but those are all things that can be learned. Shortcut keys, um, the layout, all of this. These are things that can be learned. So since I've been mixing a lot of projects in different DAWs, I know uh, the shortcut keys for Logic. I know all the hotkeys for Studio One. But an added benefit now is these manufacturers understand that people use multiple DAWs so you can actually import uh, keyboard layouts from other DAWs. So in this Studio One session for example I'm using um, oops, I'm using Pro Tools uh, like R and T you know to zoom in zoom out uh, command space for record in fact in this one I have my record to be control R because I like Studio One's command space option um, so it's so customizable you can make a hybrid you can say geez I like how Studio One has this portion of the keyboard laid out but I'm so used to how logic works over here or I'm so used to Pro Tools having this you can set it to be that and I'll go into other lessons on showing you how to take care of that this video is more just for uh, my opinion on the matter I'm not an extremely opinionated person, and I'm not going to argue one over the other. I have my preference. It's Pro Tools. I still think it's amazing. I'm not a huge fan of their business model that they've changed to, but I understand their necessity. Uh, you know, they they need to turn a profit. They're a company that you know is a pr profitable company, and they they need to uh, 
continue to bring in the dollars and so they need to adapt their business model to the changing economic climate and as I mentioned with all of this the hardware you know it used to be that um, DigiDesign before Avid took over the name of Pro Tools DigiDesign they made you use DigiDesign hardware that's why you always saw the 002 or the, the 003 racks and the uh, the controllers because you could not run Pro Tools unless you had dedicated DigiDesign hardware. Well, when Pro Tools opened up, and now you can use a PreSonus interface or an M Audio or or um, essentially anything now, they started losing money. So they had to kind of reconstruct their business model so that they could become profitable again. So I totally get it from a business standpoint. From a consumer standpoint, it kind of sucks. And consumer, I'm using as more of like a home studio type person. People who run major recording studios and major production companies, they can afford the $800 or whatever the license is. I mean, it's not a big deal to them. But to the smaller people who maybe do it as a hobby or do it semi-professionally or maybe they record their church or they record the neighbor down the street or whatever. Maybe it's not uh, realistic to be dropping $800 on the newest version of Pro Tools that they'll inevitably update within nine months and you have to pay again. So Studio One and Logic and even things like Cubase and Ableton are, I'm not a huge Ableton fan because it doesn't fit my genre, but it's amazing. People create amazing things in Ableton. The point is, is you have a lot of choices out there, all of which can be purchased on a budget. Once you settle on a DAW, assuming you're not working in a pro setting like myself where I have to mix sessions in different DAWs, I say hunker down and learn everything there is to know about that DAW. Studio One, I can highly recommend. I loved it from when I first started using it about three years ago all the way up to this new version that they released a few months ago. I think it's an outstanding digital audio workstation. I love it. Um, but it's just a matter of, excuse me, matter of preference. When I launch my uh, studio computer, or if I'm on the road and I'm using my laptop, and I have a creative moment, I open Pro Tools. Now, what Studio One did here is they're trying to compete a little bit more with Logic in that they are um, including just a ton of free sounds, or included sounds, I should say. So we're talking loops and of course virtual instruments. Now if you're like me, I use a lot of third-party virtual instruments and for that matter third-party plugins. Studio One, their stock plugins, a lot of them are really fantastic and you can continue to use them. But for those of you out there who have purchased Waves bundles or perhaps you you even have um, like some UAD stuff, you can use these third-party softwares and these plugins within any DAW of your choice. So, for example, I use a lot of, I have the complete uh, 10 software, so I use a lot of native instruments, virtual instruments. Well, I can use these in both Studio One and Pro Tools, and Logic for that matter. So, I'm not limited. Again, I can use any DAW. I can continue to use my third-party plugins, my virtual instruments that I've grown accustomed to. And I can maybe save a few bucks, not have to pay an annual subscription or monthly subscription or however they're setting it up now um, and still turn out the highest quality possible uh, so I hope that kinda you know some people get really opinionated and if you're new to this and you're trying to kind of test the waters and feel what's going on out there you, you guys know you come across so many biased um, forums online and people slandering Pro Tools and people you know saying logic is terrible and oh only use Reaper or only use you know uh, you know whatever the point is those people are just opinionated and that's they, they feel passionate about that DAW because that's what they feel most comfortable using um, so what's great too nowadays is that these manufacturers will give you 10-day, 14-day, sometimes month trials of the, the digital audio workstation. So by all means, download it. 
start using it. See which one agrees with you. I mentioned that logic is f amazing, but it doesn't match the way that my brain lines up with creating music and mixing music. It just doesn't. Um, Studio One does. Pro Tools absolutely does. Now, if you're going to be doing things like sound for web content, or maybe you make uh, jingles for commercials, anything in, or, or films for that matter, short films, feature films, uh, television series, you're, you're going to be leaning more toward Pro Tools because of their integration with video playback. And it's just, you know, it's a solid platform to use for that kind of stuff. And by that I mean... Uh, it just has it, it, it. Video editing and everything like that is just interwoven into the DNA of the of the software. Whereas Studio One and Logic, you can import some video, but honestly, you guys, it's it's like a landslide. Pro Tools just has that that corner just locked up. So um, if you're going to be doing more of that stuff, maybe Pro Tools is um, the best option for you. So anyway, I've probably rambled on a little too much, but I wanted to weigh in on that, give you guys my two cents. If you have any questions, always, always, always email me or drop a comment below one of the videos. Um, email me my uh, email me at the studio here. It's michael at prowestrecording.com. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, check out all the other videos on my channel. And um, also remember that uh, private tutorials are probably the most beneficial thing you could do for your current project. Um, I, I am nonstop. It is a nonstop business for me. I'm helping people from all over the world, literally. Um, most recently from New Zealand, um, uh, England, Indiana, uh, here in California, uh, Japan, literally the globe, you guys. Um, so I, that's what's amazing about our world, YouTube, you know, it's limitless. So I've reached a lot of people and I cannot tell you the countless amount of thank you emails and repl replies that I get um, saying that once they saw somebody mix their audio in their session, they it's like a light bulb went off in their head. And they're, they're, they're so proud. Their mixes have changed so much. Not only am I showing them techniques that maybe they're not familiar with, and how to get their recordings to sound great. But I'm showing them that with their gear, maybe they just have an inbox and a $100 microphone or $50 microphone or whatever, and they're recording some vocals. I'm showing them that with their small amount of gear, with the right knowledge, you can turn out commercial sounding recordings, okay? Professional recordings. So if you'd like to learn more about that, include it in the email, michael at proestrecording.com. It's a very streamlined process. You'll have a customized lesson sent back to you, usually within 48 to 72 hours, and it'll be one of your songs. Anyway, uh, I look forward to hearing from all of you guys. Keep rocking out, keep mixing, and we'll be in touch soon. Peace out.